I could give them finished masters and videos without having to go through the approval process that proved difficult on the label I've been on in the past, where everything was a struggle and I had to convince people that I wanted to use this producer and this video director and this should be a single and no, I don't want to be on trading cards and no, I don't want inside Cracker Jacks and Nine Inch Nails <laughs> logo, things like that. Because I was aware of the way I wanted Nine Inch Nails to be presented, you know, and I wanted to have some sort of um, kind of an artistic feel to it. Not as, It's not product, it's a piece of art. I look at my music as art and yeah. I wanted it promoted that way and I wanted to be in control of that. That's excellent. I think it's amazingly excellent, actually. And like I said, a dream, la dream label to be on for any of the bands because they have that creativity and that freedom. All right, we're going to see a video right now from Nine Inch Nails. Let's check out uh, the one from Downward Spiral, one of the many good videos from Downward Spiral. Let's check out her right now on 120 Minutes of Nothing. Let's talk a bit about how you signed Marilyn Manson, who was the first band on the label. Now, were they, did they actually approach you with a tape um, because they were fans of the band, or was it something you'd seen them live? No, we, we, went on, we were on tour forever on the first record, like Pretty Hate Machine era, and in uh, Miami, Marilyn Manson, and that time they were called Marilyn Manson Spooky Kids, opened for us a couple times. Yeah. And uh, Marilyn and I ended up kind of becoming friends yeah. on and off, just mutual respect. And it wasn't until much later after we, I just finished recording Broken. And I was going to South Beach Studios in South Beach for some reason to do something. I can't remember. I was remixing, I think, Happiness and Slavery. But on the way down, I picked up a local paper and, and I saw that uh, Marilyn Manson won the Best Local Band Award. And it reminded me, oh, I got to call up uh, Marilyn. So I did. He came by the studio and played me a tape that was a lot different than they were when they opened for us. They were more, um, drum machine tape oriented at that time yeah and the tape i heard was a live on the radio thing that was more like a full rock band and i couldn't believe how good it was, it was like way better than in the first demo you got it was, yeah it was yeah. real good i couldn't believe it was a live thing and we listened to that on the way of the long drive back to new orleans where i was living at the time and i thought it kind of crept up on me i have nothing records now this might be a good act to kind of approach to see and at the time, they were courted by a couple of major labels, but they had difficulty with, again, the content yeah. and the idea. And I thought I kind of saw them from a fan's point of view. It's like, here's a band I, I think could be really cool, but not if they get pushed into compromise Compl of any kind. Yeah. You know? And instead of smoothing off the rough edges, make them pointier, you know? right. make it scarier, exactly. play it up, you know? Yeah. And... Uh, Talked to Marilyn and seemed like the right thing to do and we got along Just you know, he's one of my best friends. We've got along very well since then. Yeah, so it's um, It's nice to see now that people are catching on to the whole thing and as they mature into a great band Which I think they have yeah, absolutely. And I think the new album's gonna secure them is not a, a Flute, but it's a, a real entity and right that to me is brings me in a Somewhat fatherly way. You know, yeah, right. but if, exactly. You know, reward. Welcome back to 120 Minutes of Nothing. I'm here with Nine Inch Nails, and uh, we're going to see it. We're going to actually, later on, we're going to talk to a lot of the other bands on the label as well. But uh, let's talk uh, a little bit more right now about the showcase that you're doing in New York uh, tonight that we're taping at, which is at Irving Plaza. It's, uh, I mean, you've got everybody there, pretty much. You've got Marilyn, Me Beat Manifesto, have recently signed your label, have come over to work with you. And mm -hmm. also, Pop Weed itself, Clint's playing, Clint Mansell, and, uh, and Kevin from Prick. Tell me about uh, the reason why you decided to come to City and do a nothing showcase night. Um. We're at the start of a huge mountain that we're at the very bottom of right now, starting a new Nine Inch Nails record. Um, just, I just finished the Manson record and some stuff on a David Lynch soundtrack coming up. And this kind of popped up like we're going to do a Nothing Records night. And the main goal, the main point of that night is to show that Nothing is a real entity and it's not just a vanity label. Like, let's give the artists their little thing to yeah. toy around with. There's a lot of that crap out. But kind of make it a bit more legitimate in a way. Yeah. The way I've treated it. and. John has treated it. Um, so originally it was going to be unannounced and be meat beat, 
and uh, Marilyn. And then I thought, well, it'd be kind of fun if we put a band together. You know, um, Robin, my guitar player, has left. And we hadn't played in a while. And it gave us something to kind of, well, toy around with the idea. Maybe we'll try it. And then the issue of who's going to play guitar, and we thought maybe we won't get anybody. And I thought, well, maybe Kevin from Prick would be a good choice because he's a good guitar player. And then maybe, originally we are going to want first, unannounced, just here's the thing, a few Nine Inch Nails songs, a couple Prick songs then. Right. Um, thought more about it, talked to Kevin about it, he was into it, and then it was fun to learn Prick songs. And the idea, like, uh, Clint from The Poppies has, been, has become a good friend of mine. Yeah. And I thought it'd be cool to kind of integrate that, maybe he'll come out for a few songs. and The couple Poppies tunes. Yeah, cool. I mean, stuff that we all like, so it's not really Nine Inch Nails in its purest sense, but it was a way that we could kind of casually get together and you know, it's been a lot of fun like learning this stuff <laughs> we're gonna uh move on right now we're gonna actually we're gonna show a video that is not from the nothing records and really yes yeah, sorry about that chat but anyway hopefully you'll like it anyway though i guess here's, five uh, videos doesn't make all <laughs> here's a band called cake from their second album fashion nugget and this is the distance on mtv's 120 minutes of nothing Hi, I'm Matt Pinfield, and I'm here once again with Twiggy and Marilyn of Marilyn Manson. When I say once again, I mean this is the last time we spent some time together, which, by the way, I enjoyed very much. Last night in the portalette at the MTV party when you were trying to take off our pants, you mean? Yeah, that was quite uh, interesting, wasn't it? I was trying to take both your pants down. Twiggy let me, though. You wouldn't, Marilyn. What was up with that? I'm not down for this whole bald thing. You're not? Billy Corgan tried the same stuff with me, and I told him no, no yeah. chance. You, you, you don't got anything against bull guys. You're just not attracted to me that way. Right. Exactly. I understand that. Well, I, I'll accept that. You know, it's something I can deal with. Let's talk about the new album, Antichrist Superstar, man. Amazing title track, by the way. I love it. Like the production sound on that record and the song itself. I've only heard two songs on a new album uh, that are coming out, Beautiful People, which uh, amazing track, too. Now, you worked with, you worked with Trent and uh, Dave Ogilvie from Skinny Puppy on this record. Tell me about it. When, when you were going in to record the record, you originally told me that it was, you were going to set up a situation of uh, in complete chaos, just real tension in the studio to, to push it to the limits. Did you, were you able to achieve that? We used a lot of different elements. Um, uh, Hebrew, Kabbalism, sleep deprivation, pain, threshold, rituals, uh, narcotics, um, Everything. We built this uh, contraption. It was like an isolation chamber, and I used to spend a lot of time in there. But we were just trying to bring out different parts of the subconscious that you wouldn't get normally. So it was like a real uh, uh, race with death, the whole recording of the album. And the album is about that whole transformation. So it was like a work in progress, and it's still, it's, it's like a living piece of uh, art because people's reaction to it will continue to feed the outcome of the the album yeah absolutely and people's reaction to your stuff is always really interesting to me mm -hmm. i got a lot of letters a lot of interesting stuff so and you know too because you're in contact with a lot of your fans we're going to come back with marilyn and twiggy in just a couple of minutes um but actually what we have to do right now is show you the top 10 singles on alternative radio this week in america Welcome back to 120 Minutes of Nothing. And speaking of Nothing Records, Marilyn Manson, who, by the way, I want to say congratulations. It smells like children ended up doing so well. I mean, since the last time we saw each other, Sweet Dreams took off. It was, it was selling a lot. It was doing really well. I was psyched. Really psyched for the band. Thank you. Appreciate it. Now, listen, you know, one of the interesting things about our last interview was something that was, you know, kind of prophetic is that you had talked about 1996, the summer of 96, being a lot like the chaos of 1969. In a lot of ways, that came true. Mm -hmm. I and mean, we're talking about in 69, there was Altamont. There was the Manson and Tate, uh, or Manson, uh, LaBianca, La Tate, LaBianca murders. All right. This year, you had the plane bombing. You had Atlanta. I mean, there was a lot of craziness going on. I mean, so in a lot of ways, I mean, you were right. Otherwise, how, how did you how do you envision this past summer? Would you say that a lot of those same things came out in the recording of this record? Um, this record will probably do uh, to music what the Manson murders did to America in '69. It's uh, it's something that will shake things up socially and politically, and uh, it's it's an important album for us. And uh, like you said, I I see things as being very similar 
and I see the the axis between those two times, you know, being interchangeable. Yeah, it's really interesting how I came to. I thought about that, and I've actually quoted you on it a bunch of times as well. So this is going to be actually your second full real album for for Nothing Records. The other one was right. the remix and stuff. Right. So uh, are you psyched to be doing this um, Nothing Showcase tonight here in New York City? Yeah, um, this is our first show with our new guitar player, and uh, we're just uh, ready to go back on the road, so we'll see what happens. Yeah, what, what ended up, I mean, do you want to comment on that? Well, actually, we can come back to it. I want to ask you about the Daisy thing, if you guys don't mind. Uh, we'll talk about... <laughs> okay. Um, anyway, um, we're going to go back. Right now, we're going to see the video for The Beautiful People, mm -hmm. which you two definitely are, I want you to know. Okay. Absolutely. Great song. Listen to the, the guitar cutting sound on this record. I love it. Beautiful um, people. We had actually sampled the drums from Iron Maiden's Running Free. Did you really? No, we thought about it, but we weren't... Think about a... using The Prisoner? No, I'm... You told me about that last night. <laughs> That's right. The, the Port of Light. No, yeah. Just... yeah, all right. Yeah, we, we brought up the Iron Maiden thing, so I brought up The Prisoner. Patrick McGowan. We helped him escape, actually. Let's check out the video right now. The Beautiful People from Marilyn Manson on 120 Minutes of Nothing. Welcome back to 120 Minutes. I'm Matt Pinfield. I'm here with two of my favorite people, the beautiful people, Marilyn and Twiggy of Marilyn Manson. Good to have you here again, and you know that. You we know how you. I feel that about you. And that's mutual. Yeah, mutual. Mutual love is there. Mm -hmm. So uh, so tell me about the the, uh, the new guitar player and where you found him since uh, Daisy is gone. His name's Zim Zim, and he's from Chicago. Well, did, did he? Did you audition him? Did he, was, he, was he someone you guys knew before? Yeah, we auditioned him. Yeah. yeah. Was it, Our yeah. old guitar player, um, he didn't. He couldn't really grasp the, the concept of Antichrist Superstar, and uh, we just had a lot of creative differences. And he didn't really. I don't think he liked our fans really. He didn't really understand what we were about, you know. So we just wanted to you know, represent us as honestly as possible. So we felt we would be a lot stronger if we were to get somebody else on the team. Yeah, well, that's cool. And it worked out really well, right? I mean, the whole thing, the recording. Yeah, so I can't wait to hear the rest of the album because those two songs are so strong. Twiggy, do you have anything you like, you want, you like to share? Uh, last minute, any, any special sexual exploits or anything interesting that's going on in the last couple of days? Were well, you talking about Jonathan Cain from The Baby's well, Journey? I saw you with Jonathan Cain last night, actually. <laughs> it was a Jonathan Cain look-alike, actually. He was dressed up as Jonathan Cain. There were some, real, there were some interesting people at that party. Ray Sawyer, Jonathan Cain. <laughs> yeah. Um, Blackie Lawless. Blackie from Lawless Wasp. from Wasp. Was there yeah. Chris Holmes? Chris Holmes, of course. Yeah. The guy Tony Richards, the, the original. Yeah, the original. <laughs> it was no. unbelievable. Um, anyway, listen, I want to say thanks and... Uh, I'm psyched about the new album. And it's, it's really good to have you guys back. And Thanks. we'll have you back again soon, I'm sure. And we'll, we'll talk more and have some more fun as well. All right. All Thank right. you. Good to have you. Marilyn and Twiggy from Marilyn Manson. Check out their new album, Antichrist Superstar, which will be in Eddie stores the soon. Skeleton from Iron Maiden was there also. Who was? Eddie the Skeleton from Iron Maiden. Was there. He was on someone's back tattooed, wasn't he? No. He, was. he was there, actually. Or Eddie was there. All right. We're going to uh, be back with more of 120 Minutes of Nothing really soon. Welcome back to 120 Minutes. I'm Matt Pinfield. I'm here with Meat Beat Manifesto. I'm psyched to have these guys today because I've been playing their records in clubs and on the radio uh, for a long time and uh, still making great records. No question about it. Jack Dangerous. Jack, good to see you, man. Cool, man. How are you doing? Excellent. Very good as well. You know, why don't you introduce guys in the band because the lineup's changed a bit over time. Okay. This is Lynn Farmer. Hi, he hi. plays drums. How are you, Lynn? Good. How are you, Doing man? A great show tonight, by the way, man. It was really cool. It was excellent. All right. This is uh, John Wilson. He plays prepared and unprepared guitar. And saxophone. And saxophone for a ring modulator. Okay, excellent. How you doing? How's it fun tonight, John? Yeah, great time. Excellent. Great time. This is Mike Powell. He plays keyboards and theremin. Cool. So. Yeah, the theremin's awesome, man. I love the sound of the theremin. You know what I mean? Great. It's very, very yeah, cool. Yeah, it's an honor to play it. Yeah. Yeah, it's excellent. You know, uh, great part of the, and new to the Nothing Records label as well. Let's talk about now. Jack, you relocated. You're living in San Francisco now, right? Yeah, yeah I've been there two and a half years now. 
It's a, you, know. it, you like it? You like it being in the states? You know? Yeah, I made the move. It's all right. You know, there's some some weird stuff going on here, same as in Britain. But you know, you sort of uh, try and put it out in your music. You know. Yeah. You know, you know. It's the best way to do it, I think. Exactly. You know, yeah. yeah. You got a great new album out called Subliminal Sandwich. Your first for nothing records too. Mm -hmm. And uh, you co you covered this World Domination Enterprises song, Asbestos and Asbestos. Great song. Really cool version too. Why don't you tell me why you decided to cover that? You knew those guys? Uh, well, I knew one of them. Not not the time though, I sort of knew that knew them afterwards but yeah. at the time it was just this this record which uh, lyrically meant a lot to me and uh, you know my, uh, I don't know my dad was working with asbestos at the time and he contracted cancer and stuff like that and I don't know you know yeah. it's just sort of it was a moment in my life I just wanted to bring back lyrically and you know do something different with it musically yeah as well. and you definitely did it's a cool treatment a great cover let's check the video out for it right now here's Meepy Manifesto and asbestos led asbestos on 120 minutes of nothing Welcome back to the second 60 of MTV's 120 Minutes of Nothing. I'm here with Meet B Manifesto, who uh, were great tonight. I mean, you know, I'm thinking about all those great albums. Storm the Studio, 99%. And, I mean, tonight, we also heard, you know, Helter Skelter. We're speaking of Radio Babylon, too. It's all about how many people are sampling the band now. It's, it's turned around. It's, all these years later, it, you've become yeah. such an influential band. The sounds, the, the big beats, the sounds yeah. there. I mean, Future, Sound of London, Prodigy have all sampled. How does that feel now, looking, looking back on it? Are you psyched about that? We're underdogs. <laughs> we we freely admit it. You know, it's cool though. You know, it's all recyclable. It's all env environmentally friendly. So yeah. we're we're down with that. And you know, all those bands you you mentioned then, what, you know, what they did with the samples is really cool, really good. So you know, we're down with it. It's cool. Yeah, it's very good. And you do great things with samples as well. I mean, let's face it. All right, you know what? I want to ask you real quick. Um, nothing, nothing records. Tell me about about getting hooked up. Are you psyched to be on this label? Do you feel good? Yeah, about being there? Definitely, yeah. This is the best label we've been on in, in America. Nothing through Interscope. They're definitely sussed. They know what they're doing. Yeah. And we're very, very, very happy. This is, this is my favorite tour I've ever, I've ever done. And after 10 years, you know, that's, that's, a, that's a pretty big thing to say. But it is. We're, we're, having, we're having a good time. Having a good time. Yeah, guys. Having, a, having a ball, yeah. Yeah, that's great. I'm really yeah. psyched to hear that. Excellent. Yeah. I mean, you played amazingly tonight. And the thing is, it's great. Like you said, like Trent had said earlier to me, you guys have a creative control, you know, full artistic control. And that's a great thing to have. And have the support of your label, right? Yeah. Have somebody exactly. giving you a hard time. That's, that's amazing. You know, it's just brilliant. It's the best position to be in. Yeah, so. by the way, I've loved all your remixes too, Jack. I mean, you know, not to be, just, I'm not stroking you, but done some really cool remixing as well, just so you know. Uh -huh. And production as well. You've seen his name on a lot of records, Jack Dangers, no question about it. Meet Be Manifesto, everybody. Hope you enjoyed them. And uh, actually, right now, what are we doing? Jen? Oh, that's right. Hey, PJ Harvey covered Peggy Lee's Is That All There Is. Check this out. It's really cool. On 120 minutes of nothing. Welcome back to 120 Minutes, and actually it gives me great pleasure to uh, introduce to you Clint Mansell from Pop Weed Itself. Clint, good to have you here, man. Nice to be here. I've been, I've been a huge fan of yours, I've followed the band for years, which you know, of course, and uh, I remember when Trent first signed me, I, was going up, I went up to Trent and told him how psyched I was that he'd signed Pop Weed Itself uh, to the label. And now, since then, a lot of changes have actually gone on within the band. You want to tell people what's going on right now with the Poppies as it stands, Trent? Yeah, Clint? Um, I, I, to a certain degree, I don't really know. Um, I, I found that I wanted to do the same things to a certain degree. What I've always wanted to do, being a band like anybody, I suppose, is like express myself. And um, being in a band for like we've made like five or six albums or something, it, it sort of gets a little stifling, you know. Kind of, we always wanted to change and always do different things, and it felt 
that certainly we were going to do the same thing and I just wanted to find some room and go and do something else and everybody else go and find some room and do something else. So we just sort of, we've worked on a lot of stuff, we're just taking some time away from each other to see how that sort of pans out really, doing, and also doing other stuff on our own and just seeing what happens, you know, I mean, we're all adults, you know, it's not sort of like the fact like we're 15 anymore and, you know, we're a gang or whatever. I mean, there's kind of that about it, but... We got to explore and seek and find out. Absolutely. I mean, you made some amazing records over time too. I mean, everything back from the early singles up to, uh, I mean, obviously Box Frenzy. This is the day. I love all those records. Yeah. Um, but it's great. How did you like? Well, actually, we're going to come back and talk to you in a minute again. I want to okay. talk about how you got signed to Nothing and uh -huh. how that all came about. But uh, let's lead to one of your videos right now. I want to uh, actually show you a great video for Ikebine Ein Auslander. Here's Pop Lead itself on 120 minutes of Nothing. Okay, we're back. We're 120 minutes. I'm here with Clint Mansell of Pop Lead itself. Now, Clint, uh, I've seen you do some great shows actually with uh, Nine Inch Nails and playing together. You, uh, I remember seeing you at Molson Park up in uh, Toronto. Oh yeah, and uh, yeah. which was amazing. Now I know tonight you're going to actually do some songs with Trent. You're going to do Wise Up Sucker, one of your, your great old tracks on RSVP uh -huh. as well. Yeah. Now tell me a bit about how you came to be signed to Nothing Records after you on RCA for years. And you actually yeah. had Rough Trade before yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. It was just a bizarre type of thing you know um m my manager knew john trent's manager and they'd been down to see us i didn't know that trent had seen us i knew that trent was aware of us and that he kind of liked what we were doing but I'd, i never met him suddenly we got dropped by rca bang there you go we were we were in you know and to me that's like the coolest thing really somebody sort of putting something back in and giving people the chance to explore what they want to do you can't knock that you know it's great that's yeah. that sort of encouragement, I suppose, from my point of view as a artiste, if you like, you know, whatever that might mean. But that encouragement is second to none. It's unbelievable. Absolutely. Well, it's obviously, I mean, he's a, he's been a fan of the bands too, which is great, and that's why he signed you. Like you said tonight, it's great you're gonna be doing Wise Up Sucker with him. I'm psyched to see you do that because it's always been one of my favorite songs of all time. Well, I think it's fair to say we managed to have quite a bit of fun, you know. Yeah. I mean, so. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it too. It'd be great. Yeah, absolutely. And it's good to see you, Clint. You know, no you question too. about it. You too. All right. Um, you should sue Billy Corgan as well. <laughs> he's, he's ripped your look up, man. You should, well, actually, should well, have tried Mark that. <laughs> We're going to have to stand in the same, uh, same room together. <laughs> okay. Uh, it's great to have Clint back. And, uh, anyway, I want to do a, say that we'll be back with 120 minutes of nothing in just a little bit. So stay tuned. Why is love sucked up? See the signs. She's shaking your ass for the ride. Welcome back to 120 Minutes of Nothing. I'm Matt Pinfield, and with me right now is Kevin of the band Prick. Kevin, it's good to have you here again, man. Thanks. Like, before I actually started hosting the show, you were on with uh, Trent and David Bowie that day when you were doing the tour together. It was really cool, and uh, it's good, yeah, good to see you opening time. those shows, man. Good time. Did you enjoy doing those shows? Was it, was it cool playing those yeah. venues that big? It was great. Um, it was cool being out with those guys and being in that kind of venue. Yeah. It's nice. Kind of a switch, you know. Yeah, right. Were you a fan of Bowie's growing up? Was he a bit, was he an influence on you at all? Yeah, I was a fan. I, I liked a lot of that uh, early stuff like Hunky Dory and and Ziggy, and, Latin yeah. Saint, stuff like that. Actually, throughout, I pretty much liked to his touch with him, different things, you know. Yeah, yeah. David's done some amazing yeah. stuff. I'm a big fan myself. So it was really great to see you all playing together. Uh, and uh, let me tell me talk a bit about how you got involved with Nothing Records. Obviously, you know, you played. Actually, Trent played keyboards in a band with you years ago. What was the name of that band? Do you remember that? Yeah, I remember that. <laughs> Can you tell us? Uh, Lucky Pier. Lucky Pier? Yeah. Now, what kind of stuff were you doing when you were playing together back then? It was uh, original, like it, you know. It was original well, What would you call it? I don't know. But it was all original stuff, right? Oh, that's cool. Definitely. Yeah. So you're doing your own thing then. That's really yeah. excellent. Yeah, we're gonna come back with Kevin in just a minute, actually. We have to lead to a video right now, and because I don't know what it is, we're both gonna be surprised. Actually, all three of us, right? Am I gonna see a video? I, I don't know. Oh. <laughs> Maybe we'll see it if we get on the other side of that camera, but we're gonna see a video, and uh, 
We're not going to know what it is. It's going to be kind of a special surprise for us. Right here on 120 Minutes because we're always full of surprises. Welcome back to 120 Minutes of Nothing. I'm Matt Pinfield. I'm here with Kevin from the band Prick. Kevin, let's talk a bit about the band. How uh, you, you hooked up with Trent again after playing together for years. Were you in touch in, uh, throughout his years with Nine Inch Nails? Were you guys staying in touch with each other? Yeah, and I, um, I sent a lot of cassettes to him, you know, while he was touring. And John Malm, who was the manager. manager and president of Nothing, you know, we've been together for a long time. And so I kept on sending all the stuff I was doing because I, I, I wasn't getting no, you know, respect or any... Yeah, I mean, or any attention to stuff. Yeah, like right, so fortunately got picked up by those guys. That's great. And did, how long did you know that he was... Did you know he was putting the Nothing Records label together at that point, or...? No, as a matter of fact, I um, went to New Orleans to uh, do some recording with them, and it, it kind of came up that I was uh, looking around different labels and uh, it was right at that time, I think, they were putting it together. It seemed like it was an unplanned thing to me. Unplanned, but it just, like, everything, all, all planets lined up, everything worked out well, right? Yeah. That's great. Well, it's an excellent album. What about a new one? Are you uh, in the process of writing some new material right now? And sure, recording? yeah. I am. What do you think people can look for a new album from Prick? When? Or yeah, what? when, yeah. When is a tough one <laughs> for me. Um, I'm not really too sure about that at this point, but uh, but you have about a, do you have an album's worth of material written now, or do you do you kind of write slowly over time? Do you kind of like how do you, how do you? Well, I write quickly. Yeah, and right. I write constantly. I see you have so, a lot of material then. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's just a matter of choosing, looking for you know, the right producer, producer. and uh, the right situation. Right. Because things are kind of you know lucid for me. Yeah. And so I. I'm kind of waiting for the right thing. Hey, when the right thing comes along, you'll, you'll get there, and that's cool because you have all the material, so that's excellent. Well, listen, I'm psyched to see you play tonight later on with the, with the Nails and Clint as well. I'm, like, I'm <laughs> looking forward to that It'll myself. It'll be cool, Kevin. <laughs> so we're going to show uh, your video right now for Animal, all right? Let's check right. it out. Let's go to Prick and the video for Animal. It's the last video we're going to see tonight on 120 Minutes of Nothing, but it's an excellent one. Check it out. <laughs> 